hello everyone my name is uh, murli kaluri i'm thana joint secretary uh, i really uh, thankful to our thana president uh, anjay choudhary garu and uh, uh, community service coordinator rajakas kurti for um, giving this opportunity to you know conducting immigration seminar today um, we have a um, Uh, ready and new man uh, i think we cannot hear anything it's completely breaking oh, okay one second we can still hear it's still here yeah it's already can hear i think it's clear yeah, yeah. 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 okay thank you so i would like to thank you our president uh, anjay choudhary garu and raja kaskurti for the community service coordinator so today we have the uh, the reputed immigration attorney rahul reddy and uh, rebecca chan so they are you know been almost 20 years in the community for helping the both employers and employees on the immigration process quickly and uh, they uh, rahul reddy founded this rahul reddy and the new man founded this organization 1997 a team of attorney with uh, deep experience serving the immigration needs so first i would like to invite our president uh, anjay choudhary garu to give few words about uh this immigration seminar anjay garu please uh, go ahead and yeah uh, thank you murli can you hear me yeah. yes okay uh, thank you and uh, a warm welcome and good evening everybody and first of all i would like to recognize two important people of this evening uh, mr rahul reddy and uh, rebecca chen uh, without you know uh, you guys uh, taking up this uh, tremendous <clears throat> opportunity to help the community and obviously you know uh, we both tana and of course both of you we have this association and you know coming up to help the community and i would you know request that we continue this association to help the community in need of course immigration is always need of the hour and especially you know i am seeing the flyer we have 1 million green cards uh, to indians and proposed budget reconciliation bill especially this particular seminar talks about uh, <clears throat> and of course uh, we have a qa qa session at the end Uh, especially upcoming employment based immigration provisions in the proposed house budget reconciliation bill to create awareness among our community and take advantage the bill has not been passed yet i think it's it's due for october the good thing the initiative is just before the bill is being passed you know how we could interpret that or what uh, changes that would uh, you know uh, uh, that would be implemented through the bill how we can take advantage of that so definitely this is going to be an important uh, seminar which is very useful uh, we tana are in the forefront for bringing many activities that are helpful for the community and cater to different sections uh, ranging from uh, kids until until uh, adults and especially migration we have a niche area where we are helping for the past uh, many years and uh, special thanks to our joint secretary murli tallu and our community service coordinator raja even in the prior years uh, you know uh, they just uh, especially more with tardu tarduri had the immigration part and now uh, of course our invaluable uh, volunteer and community service coordinator raja paid up with him so both do uh, will do magic definitely the both are uh, very and you got to bring more events to your doorstep and forefront so once again uh, thanks to both of them and the entire tana leadership uh, who rendered their unconditional support so without getting late So let us dive into the event, and once again, uh, my heartfelt thanks. You all have a good time. Thank you, thank you, Anjay Garu. Um, so Raja, so I want to introduce uh, Rahul Reddy Garu and uh, Rebecca. So welcome, Rahul Reddy and uh, Rebecca. So the first question, maybe you know, we can start uh, because this session is completely questions and answer. We don't want to just you know. uh we want to give opportunity to most of the people uh, see if we can so rahul reddy what is this bill actually what is this 1 million thing you know everybody is very curious about what is 1 million this reconciliation bill uh can you explain exactly who, who is going to benefit this bill actually first murli garu of course you know burgam padu very close to our village at tarur um the when you contacted us to today there were so many changes in the washington dc perhaps those many changes i have not experienced in the preceding 10 years uh, there was a bill when you um, the new called murli garu that was been 
passed in the subcommittee, the judiciary subcommittee of the house. We expected that to be passed in the Senate also, but the Senate parliamentarian who is not elected by the people, she is not part of the constitution. The constitution never mentions the Senate parliamentarian though. This is something created by the Senate by themselves, not by the people, not by the uh, constitution. Uh, that parliamentarian rejected these provisions to come in. So now Democrats have gone with plan B, uh, which seems to be that they're going to introduce that tomorrow. I just got this news about 10, 15 minutes ago that they are going to now modify some of the provisions because they mostly wanted the undocumented kids that came into kids that came into United States before they were 15. Uh, looks like that way, that was not going. So they are looking forward to amend some of the existing laws, um, change some of the existing laws, rather than create a different class, new class of people. That seems to be the objection from the parliamentarian. So one of the things that they want to do is something called registry. What does registry mean? That means that if you are in the country on or before, on January 1st of 1972 or before, all you need to do is that you need to prove that you've been residing from January 1st of 1972 here. You may, may, you may have made uh, occasional trips to your home country. You just need to provide the evidence that you're here. They're going to give the green card. So now, since the Republican um, uh, filibuster, which, which, is, which they have 50 votes, I mean, for filibuster, they only need 41 votes. So they are, they are objecting to the issue. So they want to change the registry date from January 1st, 1972 to, there are rumors that it may be January 1st, 2010. There are rumors that it may be January 1st, 2011. There are even extreme rumors from January 1st, 2015 also. So if that passes though, um, this is for people who are legally present in the country and also those people who are not legally present in the country. They may have to pay a certain amount of money, which most of our Telugu community or Indian community will not mind that much. And they just will get the green card. They don't need any employer. They don't need any sponsor. They just file a 485 application called adjustment of status application. Now, this seems to be the one that is going there. Among other things, it looks like the unused green cards from 1992 to 2005 of the employment base, which is approximately around 250,000 green cards, may also be actually recaptured and used based on the news that we are getting right now. So, and Murligar, you may ask question, why would Indians benefit more from the employment base trees? There's nobody else who's waiting there in line. Only Indian nationals are waiting to some extent, 95% of them are Indian nationals and five to 10% of them Chinese nationals are uh, mainland Chinese pe people are waiting for it. So if those 250,000 green cards will come in though, almost 250, if not 240,000 will be coming to the Indian community. And out of that, you know that the IT sector, the Telugu community is very high more than half of them will be taken by India, by Telugu people though. So it's very important. We need to have these employment provisions in there. That's the reason we still request all the people to write the letter to the congressmen and senators. And we have given a draft of that letter to you in the chat. If you can go there, Murligara has put the link there. So please provide that. Rebecca, what, what are the steps right now uh, for this bill to be passed though right now? Yeah, so it still has a long, somewhat long way to go. Like Rahul said, it has only passed so far in the House Judiciary Committee. Um, it hasn't yet passed in the full House. It still needs to also be present, just the language in the Senate version of the bill, and then the Senate also needs to pass it. Um, and all of that would need to happen by September 30th uh, in order to have the best chance of, uh, of this being part of this budget reconciliation process, which is kind of the best shot of it, of these immigration reforms actually getting passed, because when it is part of this budget reconciliation bill, it doesn't require, it requires just a simple majority, 50%. Uh, it's not subject to that 
filibuster rule in the Senate, the 60 vote uh, majority in the Senate. So it has a, a better chance of, of passing in this form in the budget reconciliation bill, but it needs to make it first, at least into the, the language of the Senate version of the bill, which it sounds like tomorrow, the, the plan B immigration provisions will be presented to the parliamentarian to, to see if she will allow this revised language into the bill. She's, she was an immigration lawyer before she became a parliamentarian. Yeah, she was. So, so we are hopeful that she will be uh, more open to this plan B presentation. Um, when she declined to include the immigration provisions, which we found out about on Sunday, I believe, it appeared that her main issue with the initial version of the language was the creation of if you remember the house version included um, being able to file adjustment of status for people who were in a essential worker or critical infrastructure position. And her comments indicated that she felt like that was creating kind of a new class of green card applicants that doesn't really exist in the, in the law. And so this plan B presentation tomorrow um, kind of scales that back it doesn't include, I believe, that critical infrastructure, essential worker language, but the provisions, if it does include the, the recapture of the visas that have gone to waste in the past 30 years, that alone is going to make a huge difference for Indian nationals who are, as Rahul said, the, the ones who are waiting the longest in the current backlog. Mutlikar, you want to go to the live question? Yes. Uh, Raja. Hello, everyone. Um, just to uh, raise your hands, whoever have the questions, so we can go by one by one. Please, please raise your hand. Please raise your hands. Hey, Venkat Kiran, go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, so do you uh, recommend or suggest like the people whose uh, filing status got current, like uh, do, do, you, do you recommend them to just go ahead with the process or will Absolutely. the- Absolutely. Okay. Your date is current. Don't look, don't speak, put the phone off, contact your immigration lawyer, file yes. a 485. Yes. Don't even come to these meetings. Okay, sure. Thank you. So whoever whoever asked the already asked the question, please uh, um, like bring down your hand so that I can I will go with the next person. Okay, there is somebody called Syed Baji. Uh, please go ahead and ask your question. Syed. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for arranging this meeting uh, for Thana and all the team panel. Uh, I know. Uh, the main thing we are lack of advocacy from Indian group or Indian community. At least Tana uh, came over and uh, arranging this one. But the legislations, whatever the bills they are trying to address this immigration bill for legal, all those stuff, it's been put down based on the, uh, I mean, lobbying, whatever it says. But the same people, uh, I saw local Tana team itself, somebody asking a question. What is a 485 kind of a silly question from Indian nationals? Those are the things it's really frustrating me, <laughs> like why these people are not supporting. At the same time, these attorneys are lawyers also, like in 2016, like the, I was here from 2006, but uh, I-140 EAD in Obama administration, it's approved. All these lawyers and uh, all these other consultancies got pulled up and they cancel I-140 EAD. Even this, if the parliamentarians or whatever the bills is proposed, we don't know what is the guarantee they can uh, dump it again. Is there any answers for that? Yeah, let me answer, Syed. First, uh, your question is with regards to the I-140. None of the consulting companies have ever come up with any money. I was there in the video. Some 
guy who's making $500,000 on the video that I am there um, has only told you what he told you. You did not listen to the video though. We are collecting money at that point of time. When we are collecting the money, we are collecting the money for the suing the USCIS for amendment, which we ended up suing. There are a lot of times we sued USCIS and we got some success in many of those things. So that's a wrong information. The guy's making $500,000 on it. The second thing that you're objecting to the Tana though, every year when Tana does, I, I'm not going to say praise very much about Tana, but let me explain you what goes on in Tana though. Tana, every time when they conduct their national event, they put the immigration event. I, they invited me, um, even Rebecca came a couple of times to the event. How many people showed up Rebecca in that event? Four people, oh, five. In the in the Tana big event, remember there are four people yeah, that showed up. Yeah, we do the convention every every time. Every time, and 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 then when when these Tana people conduct those conventions, when they invited people like us to speak, Ravi Garu, you know how many people showed up? Three people showed up, or two people showed up, or four people showed up into immigration. It's not the Tana though. Uh, it's us we have to blame when we go there. Oh, there is a movie star. You guys are going after the movie star. You should demand yourself to put a booth out there to have each of the person who is coming into the into the Tana to write a letter, have iPads and all those things ready for that. You don't do it, we can't blame Tana. They are creating, they are giving free facilities for you. They are doing all those things, but it's us. Now, they don't know 485, of course they won't know. They have left, it's been long that they have got their immigration. Back in olden days, when they got their green card, though, they just, employer takes the hand of the employee, walks to the immigration office. Hey, I want this employee to get the green card. That's it. They used to give the green card. They don't know 485. Of course they don't. They won't understand it. It's us to educate them, us to do that. And the other thing is that it's always good to go by including more people rather than telling that, okay, Tana is bad. This organization is bad. That organization is bad. No, that's not the way to approach when we are going, though. We should include all the people, whether it's Tana, other organization, other organization, we include them. We should, whatever efforts they do, we have to say thanks to them and use more of their basis and have them also write letters for us. That's my suggestion though. But I know there is one particular organization that want to say Tana is bad, the lawyers are bad, the, the parliamentarian is bad, this is bad, that is bad. Well, we need to inclusive, all inclusive, going, that is the best process that I would suggest for you. At this point of time, there is a letter that we have drafted. I want you to write the letter to the congressman. If you have a better version of it, yeah, you can circulate it, but you need to write a letter to the congressman. Don't pay the money to this particular organization that wants to exclude everybody else and gives a lot of misinformation. Okay. Uh, one, one question. Um, uh, Rebecca or Rahul, so one of the guy has in October 2020, I downgraded from EB2 to EB3. Murli, you got cut off. EB3 dates retrogress and the priority dates becoming current in EB2. EB2, what actions to take? I just do one second. Uh, Murli, I, I know the question. I, I can okay. expect it. Yeah. He filed a downgrade application under EB3, and he's estimating that what if the priority date moves, uh, moves back for EB3 and moves forward for EB2. Assuming that his underlying EB3 application, I-140, is already approved, he can switch to EB2 if he's working with the same employer. Yeah. We can go with the next question. Okay, go ahead, uh, Raja. Yeah. The next question, uh, Sharath, you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sharath and Tana, thank you for organizing this session. And uh, Rahul Garu and um, um, Emily, um, actually Rebecca, thank you for joining here uh, and helping us. So one question I have, um, Rahul, I regularly uh, uh, listen into your YouTube sessions uh, with Emily Newman. Um, so one suggestion you made in the past about how to increase the advocacy is writing the letters. We've been writing the letters and uh, my, my point is what else we can do to improve the advocacy further. Um, you know, when I join in the immigration sessions outside, um, so the biggest, uh, you know, what I hear is we don't have enough advocacy from our community. That's what we left out in most of the times, including I, I, the- 
yeah including our including our telugu community including our thana yeah. including our yes I, i i i i i i agree with you the only thing the way we can do is that when we go to these events that they are calling us and they give us a platform for us we need to use that platform we practically have to ask them give us a booth for us you know we just were we are just people who want to get the green card i bet the thana will donate a booth for us okay then we can have so many volunteers there every person who comes into there are you a racist no then please write a letter to the congressman you have couple of couple of computers there couple of things there you have them write those things they will do it i am absolutely certain they will do it but if we keep on blaming that you don't know for it they won't know it we have to tell them what a for it why is look you got the green card in one day one year two years it is taking 15 years for us they don't know that thing when we go to those big tana events we just go to the show that particular star comes in we dance around we go we come back they won't understand it we have to we have to put them on the spot and they will do it they are very charitable people these organizations are very charitable people they will not even charge us money if we tell them put a booth for us they may charge money for the gold store but not for us you do it you ask for it they will do it yeah yeah we are, we we at tana like for in, in at the convention um we do give free booths to the non non profit or these community kind of things we do charge for the uh, commercial vendors um like the gold shop or cloth merchants and those things but uh, we do give a small table for these kind of things um uh, but we have to have some volunteers who can explain uh, these kind of things to the people and uh, involve them so to sign these kind of petitions so if uh, we we can do that um going forward as a community for services coordinator i will take this as uh, as a point and then wherever we do whenever we do maybe i will make sure uh, we will have some volunteers uh, to uh, spread the word about these immigration issues and write letters to all the uh, whatever whatever our lawyers or our, our advisors suggest right so we will make sure those things thank you very much all you can do is take the horse to the water ravi you can't do anything else we have to drink it <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank thank you and the next question is from kartik kartik p uh, you want to go ahead kartik hi uh, thank you thank you everyone thank you atana for uh, um, uh, suggesting this call as well as ready ready girl and uh, rebecca for attending this and answering our question this is uh, now overall in the past um, past three callers i've noticed they are asking for a community but i have a personal question my on, on my <laughs> behalf uh, so my case is uh, i am i have a eb2 in uh, july 2013 time frame with my old employer and my current employer has recently filed my perm it's been three and a half months he just started filing the perm and uh, with Charlie Oppenheim's uh, recent interview that uh, he suggested where November dates are going to retrogress for EB3. What are the chances? Should I stick to my old employer? Or, I mean, should I stick to my current employer, wait for, because it's, perm is expected like five months time frame. Karthik, why did you waste the opportunity in October of 2020? <laughs> That's a very good question. I had some personal reasons I couldn't apply during that time. uh the, yes I, i always regret not doing that at that time i couldn't um, is there is there any chance that you can have both options open that you can request your old employer to file the downgrade application and for it for application and see if this one gets approved then you can go with this company otherwise you move on to the old company can you do that uh unfortunately the old company is not that accommodating and they are wanting me to join is, the, how 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 big is that company though employee wise the old co- old company, old company. Is, uh, um it's it's a uh, 500 uh, and large it's an I indian am. consulting firm and they are willing to do the downgrade and file the 485 for you if you join them yeah yes they put are the, willing to put the phone off and go join them i would do that if i were you 500 not 500k it's 500 people in total employees employees yeah yeah i would i would go i would go with them i don't care okay. what you lose because getting in the boat is the most important thing sometimes the boat may not arrive for 10 years sometimes it may not arrive for 
seven years, eight years. You don't know. And Charlie, he wasted 80,000 green cards and he's on a plan to waste about 100,000 green cards this year. He's telling it that he's going to retrocess it. You better be scared. If I okay. were you, I you already wasted. I, I, I'm not you because I would have gone in October for whatever personal reasons. But anyway, you, if you have a chance right now, I'm going back. Okay. Thank you, Radiger. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And your YouTube uh, has, um, video calls have been very helpful as well. Just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Yep. That's all. Thank, thank, thank you, Karthik. Uh, thank you very much. The next question I will read from the chat. Um, apart from visa recapture and registry date update, do we know if we also have the adjustment of status for whom priority date is greater than two-year provision as well included in plan, plan B? Rebecca, any insight you may have? Um, we're not exactly sure on that provision. Um, so all we have heard, all we, we've only heard so far that the plan B presentation will be tomorrow and that it will likely include 245I and uh, the registry update and the backlog reduction, the, the visa recapture. These are just kind of rumors right now. We won't know for sure until we see actual language. So we're not sure right now if the two-year priority date is going to be included tomorrow. But Raja Garu, one of the thing is that, that when the provisions have been presented to the parliamentarian though, she, this particular provision of allowing people to file the 485 application, even if the priority date is not current, was not something objectionable for her. One reason, she did not object because she said there is an entire new class of people created for additional status. This provision, what this gentleman is asking is not creating a new set of, uh, new set of uh, people though. It's already existing set of people. That's one reason I think so it should be in there. The second reason why it should be in there, Rajagaru, is that in 2005, um, same thing happened uh, where the where the Congress wanted to include, uh, the House wanted to include some of the provisions. The provisions that were included in there in 2005 in Senate budget, budget reconciliation bill though, that included having people to file the adjustment of status even if the priority date is not current. It was included, that's the, the other question was that it was never passed, that's a different issue, but it was included in this provision at that point of time. So we may have a greater chance to have this provision of filing the 485 application. There's a greater chance for it to be in there. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, the next question, Sudhakar Turga, you want to go ahead? Please unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Tan uh, Tana, for conducting this seminar. And uh, thanks, Murli Garu, and uh, thanks, uh, Raja Kaspati, for giving me this chance to speak with Sahil Garu. Yeah, uh, Rahul Garu, I see all your YouTube videos and, you know, I follow your news actually and thanks for letting our, you know, Hispan community on to be getting green card people actually, right? So my question is, uh, I'm sure definitely this reconciliation will uh, will take uh, back and forth and will take a lot of time to get people, you know, get this approved, right? So meanwhile, I'm, I'm just worried, like, you know, how about uh, the... Uh, my priority date is about 2015 uh, March, right? So when do you Yay. think that at least this date will come? That's 2015 March, Rebecca. Oh, I don't want to guess anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, all we know is that it's been stated EV2 is supposed to advance significantly or by several months at least this upcoming fiscal year, but it would surprise me quite a bit if it moved enough to get to 2015, unfortunately, at least in this next fiscal year. Okay, sorry to sorry to let uh, complete my question. My name is EB3 actually, so I just want to know okay. like if I can at least my EAD filing it. Unfortunately, yeah. probably even longer just based on the most recent statements from the government, I mean, they are kind of changing their own statements. It seems like on a monthly basis sometimes, but based on the most recent statements from 
the visa chief at the State Department, um, at least for this upcoming fiscal year until October 2022, we don't expect EB3 to move beyond where it is now. Most likely we'll move backwards, possibly like Rahul mentioned. Um, there is a couple of things that I want to point out, um, uh, Sudha Kargaru, is that you said it may take a long time for these provisions to go through. There, there, there will be a lot of ping pong going on, but the long time may not be there, though. The reason is that the budget has to be passed. Uh, there is a good chance that they're going to extend the, the temporarily for a while to allow some money to be given to the government so that the government doesn't shut off. Uh, and then they have to pass this bill. I mean, at least the Democrats want to pass this bill. Um, so it may not be a long time that things may move. Uh, uh, that may affect your priority. The second thing is that I'm also concerned about the USCIS appropriations bill. In that appropriations bill, uh, the men's amendment says that the extra 150,000 green cards that were supposed to flow from family immigration to this one they're saying that they may stop that though. So that will significantly affect. If that extra 150,000 will fall into the employment base, you have a chance, you have a chance. But otherwise, if they don't fall into, it may take 20 years for you to get to the priority date though, unless something happens. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so there is no chance for us to... <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, I know, but th this is all, that's the reason why we are emphasizing to keep writing the letters use the platforms that are created by the TANA organization. Yeah, sure. The, the next question we have is uh, from the chart, like if we travel outside of US when I-485 is in pending without AP, uh, will be will my 485 will be abandoned? Can I go for H-1B stamping while my 485 is in pending and come back to US? The second answer is definitely why the 485 is pending, they can go for H1B stamping, absolutely, nothing wrong. Now, will the 485 will be abandoned if you leave the country though? Uh, if you are going for a H1, H4, L1 or L2, and you're coming back on any of these four visas, you are not abandoning the 485 application though. You may be abandoning only one thing that's called advanced parole, which after you come back, you can refile the application. But you're not abandoning the 485 if you are on H1, L1, L2, or H4. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next question is from Amini Reddy. Uh, Amini Reddy, can you unmute yourself? Or... Yeah, sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Yamini. Um, um, so um, th uh, thank you, Tana team, for organizing uh, this platform to reach out to uh, Rahul Reddy, sir, and uh, Rebecca, uh, ma'am. And uh, thank you so much for clarifying all our questions. So my question is a personal question for my family. So me and my husband um, both are applied on EB2. Our priority date is on February 1st week, 2016. So we would like to downgrade one of... Uh, um, as like uh, to EB3. So Rahul sir, is it a good idea to downgrade to EB3 and one will be on EB2 so that based on, uh, so we really don't know, we, we can't anticipate, uh, you know, which one will go first. So is it a good idea to do it now? So you have an I-140, your husband has an I-140. Both of them are February, February 2016. Is that what you said? Yes. We have a separate one. Yeah. And let me answer the question. Even if you don't have a separate thing, Yamini, Mm -hmm. When you downgrade the EB2 to EB3, EB2 doesn't disappear though. It still is there. You can either use EB2 or EB3. Now, obviously in your case, you have a husband, he has an EB2. But assuming if only the one person is there, when they downgrade, that doesn't mean EB2 doesn't go anywhere. You have both. You can use that or this, whichever goes forward though. So in your case, Yamini, I would definitely have a downgrade option, do the downgrade, and be ready for either either thing. EB two moves forward, yes. EB two moves. EB three moves forward. I have both options. I'll do that. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. And the next question is from Ramchandra Adala. Please, sir, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Morli Garu and the Raja, um, and thanks for. The for creating this platform and uh, 
thanks for thanks to Mr. Rahul Reddy and Rebecca um, for today's evening for uh, giving some kind of guidance for the Zolda community, Telugu community especially. So my question is like my PD is uh, June 20. So I filed my EB3 into EB3. Uh, basically June the June what? June 2019. June 2019. Okay. EB3. The reason EB3 is because uh, that time my um, employer said that because the EB3 line is less and I can go and upgrade. So vice versa is not possible. But now the scenario is different because everybody is downgrading from to EB3. Now my question is completely different. Can I upgrade from EB3 to EB2 EB in order to get the dead one? Is now anyway we know that EB2 is. But do you know if your labor has been filed under so EB2 or EB3? Uh, we ca I can't hear you properly though. Yeah, your voice is very low. Um, we were able to hear you before, but not now. Uh, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's it's a uh... yeah. Ramchandra, your voice is yeah. very low. We can't hear. Yeah, is it audible now? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Good. I'm sorry. It got disturbed. Um, so let me let me get the point. So you said yeah. that you your prior date is June 2019. You filed under EB3. You got the EB3 approved. Now question is, can you upgrade to EB2? My first question is, do you know if the labor certification was filed under EB3 or EB2? It is EB3. If it is EB3 labor certification, though, if you want to upgrade it, you'll have to file a fresh labor certification to upgrade to EB2. Oh, okay. Okay. And one more question, sir. One more question. And now, uh, the whatever the company filed my EB3, I'm with the same company, but I'm working with some other financial institute, bigger financial institute, of course. Um, so now, currently, there's a negotiation going on. The company the financial company whom the client basically the client wanted to hire me and they are discussing the hr is discussing with me so do you advise me to just um, go ahead and um, make my h1 transfer or do you want me to wait for some more time because <laughs> yeah. uh, rebecca i i'll give you the option to answer tough questions i don't want to answer now <laughs> the bill is there you're negotiating after two years of i-140 you can file the 485 would you move to a different company right now? Um, if you can wait 10 days, <laughs> maybe see what happens in the next week or so. Um, okay. You know, if if the provisions that we want go through, then it, it, it may be wise to stick with your current company. Um, if, unfortunately, it kind of stays as the status quo, at least in the near future, your priority date was 2019, I believe you said. Um, yeah. And if the company that you're talking to now is willing to do both your H-1B transfer and file a new perm for you, um, I would say if it's still the status quo after this month, um, yeah, there's no harm in joining that company. Um, if they do the perm for you, um, see if they can file it in EB2 so that you have that advantage. Um, well, anyway, I, 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 I beg to differ from Rebecca, though. Um, I, uh, I, I, I won't tell you what to do. I will just tell you what I would do. And mm -hmm. believe me, there are so many negative comments that comes to me because I speak like this and people take their decisions. And that's up to you to, to make the decision. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I would at least wait for one and a half to two months before I move. Sure. Anyway, that they said that it, it will not happen very next month or two months. I, 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 we, will get, we will get an idea by next month. That's my opinion. Oh, it's great. up to you. Great. Thank you very much. And third question, final final question. And I'm planning to travel to India in the next year, June. So do you advise me to travel and travel outside of US with the family? Absolutely. A, no immigration lawyer will tell you to go there and put your head in front of the <laughs> Uh, in front of the the person who is going to have a big uh, sword there, I mean, knife there. Yeah, going to the consulate and getting that, we can't advocate that. I mean, it's your risk that you're taking. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, the next question I will read out from the um, chat box. Um, the one quick question, will the proposed sub 
supplement fee of 5000 usd b for the entire family or each member of the family have to pay 5000 us dollars um it seemed like the house version would be just 5000 for the principal applicant I believe so it wouldn't be 5000 for each member of the family mm -hmm. um yeah, but yeah. We don't know if that provision will even make it into the Senate version of the bill. And then if so, if it makes it in, if there will be changes, if the Senate is going to, they could potentially put it for 5,000 for each family member. Um, so we will need to, to wait and see, but the house version seemed to be just for the principal applicant only. Okay, thank you. And the other question, you uh, the plan B is nothing but bringing the 20, 250,000 unused green cards. Uh, if yes, what is the expectation moving the dates for EB2 and EB3? Um, well, it may go to 2017. That's my guess. Um, Re Rebecca? Yeah, I would if agree. It's, if it's only 250,000, though. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard to know how many exactly labor certifications were filed and then of those how many were duplicates like upgrades or downgrades yeah i, yeah, I would between 2017 and 2018 is my estimate Rajagar. okay sure thank you and the next question naveen uh, would you like to go ahead and ask the question uh, unmute yourself yeah so thank you Reddy and uh, rebecca for uh, helping the community with your time and your valuable inputs so the question I had is uh, with regards to my status, wherein uh, uh, I currently have uh, an approved I-140 from a uh, previous employer. And based on that, uh, I have my H-1 extension till uh, uh, 2022. Uh, my wife has got her own H-1B, which is getting expired in the upcoming January. She's completing her six years. And uh, I have uh, applied for H-4, uh, and also for EAD effective after the expiry of this H-1B. So the question I had was if um, uh, my wife's employer, if they're going to provide any letter or any document to uh, USCIS stating the importance of this employment, would it help uh, to expedite the H-4 EAD approval so that there, there wouldn't be any break in the, her employment? So what would be your recommendation, sir? We have no clue when they would expedite, when they don't expedite. We used to have court litigation, but that stopped working, we stopped it. If you find a solution when they can, how they can expedite, when they can expedite, you let us know because we have no clue. Um, we have had situations where gynecologists uh, who were seeing patients um, have the surgeries scheduled because they can't do the surgeries unless they have the EAD for the patients that they're having they didn't expire it for them. So yeah, you can try your luck with the employer letter. Practically 70% or 80% of the people under your situation can easily get that letter. Will it work for you? I don't know. We don't, did it ever work? Yeah, about 0.5% of the time or 0.1% of the time it works, but we don't know whether when it works, when it doesn't work. So, so in that case, would it make sense like, uh, uh, she travels outside US, get her H4 uh, dependent visa, and then comes uh, back I would, and applies? Yes, yeah, still, you still have to apply for the EAD though, but right, right now yes. travel, getting the visa and all those things, that's up to you, which way you will take the choice. Okay, and, and in the meanwhile, I was telling you, right, my current, uh, the employer is filing for my green card uh, using my old approver's uh, uh, approval date, that's currently in perm. I hope uh, that gets approved by December or January. So if my perm gets approved by then, uh, how quickly I can file for I-140, 485, and EAD concurrently? What is the prior to date? Uh, Jan 2013 in EB2. Uh, if, if it is, if the, uh, which is uh, 2013 is not current, but if it is current though, uh, yeah, once the perm is approved- Downgrade and apply. Yeah, once once you know what the priority date is, you know what EB2, EB3 is, you know what the filing dates is with, you know what the final action dates is, right? By this time, yes. if you are allowed, if you if you are allowed to file the, if you are allowed to file the 485, if you get the labor certification approval, you can file on the same 
day or next day for I-114485. Okay, and, and what's the period uh, it's taking for uh, the 485 based EID? Uh, that's going to take anywhere between four months to one year right now. And there's no uh, premium processing for that? No premium processing, I mean. Okay, thank you. I'll move on to the next question. Uh, Swami, um, would you like, um, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, uh, I'm Sri Devi. I'm Mrs. Swami. Uh, thank you for organizing this and uh, thank you Rahul sir and Rebecca ma'am for the service that you are providing. Uh, sir, I had one question. Uh, actually, I had two questions. First question is like our priority date is 2013 January and we just moved to our previous employer. And now that we are uh, hearing about the retrogression, we were in a dilemma whether to stick with EB2 or go for EB3 downgrade. Uh, as uh, the, uh, the company's attorney, he was suggesting us to stick with EB2 because this is just a one month time and um, will they be able to file and stuff? So we were, we were not sure what to do. See, there is a, there is a theory that says that um, if, if, you know, somebody is giving a million dollars to you right now, somebody may give you a million dollars to you later on may give you, may not give you. What would you do? Take the million dollars that's there. Don't wait. Get in the boat, guys. Get in the boat. Because we don't know. The guy is threatening us. He's going to retrogress the prior to date. The prior to date in April of 2012 was May 1st of 2010, guys. Do you know how long it took for it to come to that date again? It took nine years to get the date again. So if the boat is there, we don't know when the boat is going to leave, get on the boat, file the EB3 downgrade and go for it. Yeah, sure, sir. So second question that I have is like, uh, sir, I was on H1B visa previously. I was I-140 approved. And then I got uh, denial based on the specialty occupation. So I moved from H1 to H4 EAD and continued my job. Uh, now that the extensions are taking so long for H4 EAD, is there a possibility I can go back to my H1B again? Um, or uh, I read in an article that from February 1st uh, onwards of this year that the denials are not happening based on the specialty occupation. Is that correct, sir? That is right. It's thanks to the person who first uh, said the, that we collected the money that's the reason why we collected the money to sue the USCIS. Yes, uh, it's not that denials are not happening. They have gone very, very, very less. I would say in 2017, 2018, in our office, every single day, there was not a single day that passes by. Every single day, we used to get a denial for the cases we filed. Forget about other lawyers filed. Now, ooh, we see a denial like once in 10 days or once in 15 days. So it's fine to go for H1B back. Absolutely. I would do that if it were you. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. And uh, the next question I will read out from the chat box. Uh, my priority date is May 2012, and I am filing for AOS on October uh, 1st, 2021. Are there any chances if retro retrogress, if EB2 filing dates... Uh, if he's going to file the adjustment of status in EB, he's going to file on October 1st, is it right, Rajagaru? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, there is, there is, I mean, he's telling that the EB2 may advance, but if this gentleman is eligible to file in the month of October, he should not wait. He should just file the 485 application in October itself, should not look into what's going to go on in November. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next question is, uh, I know there was a bill for age out children. Any insight if this is included in the current bill? Rebecca, you want to answer the tough questions? Um, <laughs> Easy questions. We don't know at this time um, if that is in the plan B presentation tomorrow specifically. My guess would be that it is. The protection for the you know, documented dreamers is really one of the least controversial kind of 
parts of the um, proposed provisions. I doubt that you know either party would be against that provision, and so my guess is that it would be in the plan. Don't you B. think so, Rebecca? That it's a different class that has been created. The parliamentarian might object, but it may withstand the filibuster sixty votes. Potentially, but I mean, it it's the protection for, you know, for people who already have somewhat of a path, but, you know, just don't have even as much protection as DACA kids right now. Yeah. We'll see how it goes on tomorrow, Rajagara. Okay, sure. And the next question, um, what is the official name of this bill that will be presented tomorrow? Oh, this is not the bill, guys. This is budget reconciliation bill. This is just part of the entire 3.5 trillion bill. Uh, in fact, the whole bill might be in thousands of pages, including the infrastructure, uh, electric vehicle credits for the labor union employers only that to make it. I mean, imagine that. I mean, this is a long bill. Yeah. It's, there are so many things that are there in this bill. The mm -hmm. bill will be budget reconciliation bill. It will not be immigration bill. At okay. least not the one we are discussing right now. Uh -huh. So on the next question, hope you are doing, okay. My labor and I-140 was approved in mid-2020. Would you advise when could I expect my priority date? If, if the things stay as it is, not before you die. I'm sorry, but uh, um, we wrote an article, me and my business partner wrote an article saying that it's going to take 108 years for the people who filed in 2018-19 to get the green card though. We did a very good research on how many pending, how many estimate, what the things were, and we wrote it. Uh, but there is an institute called Cato Institute, which we, you know, Rebecca, me, Emily, and you know, all immigration lawyers highly respect that organization. That came and told us, they published an article, very similar lines, and they told us, Raja Garu, that we are wrong by 42 years. Okay. It's not 108, they said it's 150 years. Oh. They have collected, <laughs> they have collected the freedom of information. They had a little bit more money and resources. They said if we go with the with the position, it's not 108 years, it's 150 years. Oh. And that's that's where the first caller was pointing out is that the the people who have, you know, the Tana heads, they have got the green cards much sooner, so they don't understand. I understand that. There's nothing wrong with it. They have moved on their lives, they have other priorities. But we have to explain it to them. That's our fault that we're not explaining it very clearly. Yes, it's going to take 150 years. And the next question, my priority date is Jan 2019. So what are my chances of getting benefited from this bill? Everything, everything, anything. So if you kick some of the people out in front of you outline and get them the green card, you're next in line. Okay. Obviously, I mean, for all, if the provision that the priority date is not current, you can file the 485. If you have an IVA priority date of two years old, you're in, you're, you're, you're in. Um, if you get the extra 250,000 green cards and the, the people who are in front of your line, they get kicked out because they get the green card, you are next in line. So for all provisions for 2019 and 2020, if you can get the, any of these extra numbers to you, it's going to be beneficial. It's going to cut down time a lot. He, here is a Rajagaru. The difference would be that mm -hmm. the people who are waiting for two years, Rajagaru. Let me uh, let me. Do you know how many of them are Indian nationals? All of oh. them. Ninety-five percent of them are Indian nationals. Maybe five percent to six percent of them are Chinese nationals. Mm -hmm. So practically, in how much of them are Telugu people? A good number of them are Telugu people. So yes, it is our responsibility more to, to lobby much better because 
it's our community, the Telugu community that gets affected much more than any other community, Indian community in particular, Telugu community more. Okay. Yeah, the next question is, um, my PD is December 2013 in EB2. Last month, my employer filed another 140 in EB3 as my date is current in EB3. I-140 is not approved yet. Also filed 485 on EOS as per Charlie, if EB3 date retrogress to November 2013 and if EB2 date progresses, do I have to file the 485 and EOS again in EB2? No. It doesn't need to. Okay. And the next question I will go with uh, Kiran. Uh, Kiran Bojadla, can you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Kiran Bojadla. Hi. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, yeah, hi, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Rahul Daru and uh, Rebecca. Thanks for your time. Uh, Actually, I have a question, sir. Actually, uh, I've been uh, like uh, my prior date is uh, 2012 May, and uh, last October I filed in EB3 uh, from my new employer. I filed in e e EB3, and then uh, I got my my fingerprints done so far. Uh, all the 485 and advance parole and everything I have applied, and now actually my date is even current in the uh, in the EB2 also. So is it a Advice to refile uh, in in EB EB two the four eighty five again or stay back in EB three for a while. This this question is coming very much, Rebecca. What's your answer? It's really hard to say because it's true that it's been stated EB three could retrogress this upcoming year and that EB two will advance. We just don't know at this point how much retrogression or how much advancement there will be in either category. And if your I-485 is already filed in the EB3 category since last year, is it? Yes. Um, yeah. And if the I-140 is already approved and you've been fingerprinted, submitted the medicals, um, you know, it really depends on how much retrogression there is. If it doesn't get to the point where your priority date is, I wouldn't do anything because you're, you know, on track to get the I-485 approved pretty soon. If you file a new set of I-485s in the EB2 category, which you can do if you have been maintaining your non-immigrant status, your age status, if that's what you're on. If yes. you've been maintaining it, you can theoretically file another set of I-485s in the EB-2 category, but you'll be starting from the beginning of the line again. You'll have to wait for potentially fingerprints for that whole one year process. Um, so unless the retrogression is pretty severe to the point that it's before your priority date and it doesn't look like it's going to get back to your priority date um, anytime soon, you know, for several months or even a year or so, um, I would probably just stay in the EB3 line and just wait for it to finish. Yeah, thank you. Have you ever been to LA? Have you ever gone yeah. to highways in LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and EB, so EB3 and EB2 are the lanes that you go in there, in LA lanes, particularly, not in Houston like us, okay? Yeah, yeah. The lane that you are in never moves. Yeah. And when you move to the next lane, the lane that you left moves and this one doesn't move. Um, when it comes to the EB2 and EB3, though, this is exactly what's going to happen. We predicted it before. How do we know it? We have seen the Chinese nationals, mainland Chinese nationals. So. Uh, we have seen that. So, so, But the only problem is every time you move from one lane to another lane, we call it as caboose. That means you start all, all over from the back. Uh, not where you are at. And that's where the problem comes in. It may not be advisable just because, let's say, for example, your EB3 is not current and EB2 is current. You want to interfile the entire thing. Guess what? You interfile the whole thing. By the time the USCIS officer changes, boom, now EB3 moves. And a lot of the people, especially between the people of May 1st of 2011 to January 1st of 2015, 
lot of the people are eligible for either EB2 or EB3. So it will be like, okay, that moves, everybody will go. It will be LA lanes if for the next four or five years, if the things remain as it is, it's going to be LA lanes. Yeah, yeah. That's a good explanation, um, Rahul. Gare. And the next question we have is, um, what is the impact of this bill on EB1? Not much as far as I know. Um, I mean, it seems like they would also be subject if the, for example, the two year party date provision makes it in, it seems like they would be eligible for that as well. But I mean, at this time, EB1 is current, I believe in all country categories. And so it, practically it doesn't make too much difference um, unless we are looking at EB1 retrogression in the future, which we haven't heard any indication of that. Okay. And the I-140 approved till March 2023, would that be okay to plan my travel to India next year? Please advise. I-140 is approved in March 2023. It's still March 2023. We didn't get the question. I-140 approved till March 2023. No, Mark, I-140 doesn't have an expiration date. So there must be some confusion in what you Okay, so. And I'll move on to the next question. Um, I am on EB2 and have an approved I-140. My H-1B is uh, maxing out in November 2022. If I change employer now, do I have to file for fresh labor certification followed by 140 approval and H-1B extension before November 2022? Is it advised? Rebecca? So if your current I-140 has been approved for at least 180 days, should be fine to at least switch to a new company and you can extend your H-1B beyond the six-year limit using that prior I-140 approval notice, even if when you leave, the company withdraws it. As long as it was approved for 180 days before it was withdrawn, it's good basically forever for purposes of extending beyond the six year limit. Um, so you can at least do that to move over to the new company and extend beyond November, 2022. As far as uh, the new company filing a perm in I-140, yes, they will need to eventually. There isn't necessarily a need for them to do that before November, 2022, just before you can apply for the I-485, which depending on your party date. Sorry, I don't remember if you mentioned your party date, but if it is not current anytime soon, um, there isn't necessarily a rush for the new company to, to file the perm in I-140 right away. They will need to eventually. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, I applied H4 extension for my wife and son, EAD for my wife. My wife is planning to go India for stamping. Is there any issue for EAD application and my son H4 extension as it is co-applicant? Co-applicant. And it's an extension, is it right? Uh, yeah, it's a H4 extension. Rebecca, we are seeing some of the H4's denial when they go and get the stamping done. Since there is a co-applicant here, we are at risk, is it right? Yeah. That's not supposed to happen. When it's an extension of status, you're supposed to be able to leave the country, come back in, and that I-539 is supposed to continue processing. I think in some limited instances, we have been seeing it erroneously denied. Um, so yeah, like Rahul said, because there is a child that is included in the same I-539, if you don't wanna risk um, a denial, that would put you know both of you out of status potentially. It may be best to um, either for both of you to go for stamping and come back in so that you're both uh, in H4 status um, and not dependent on the I-539 or both of you just remain in the US and wait for the I-539 to finish processing. Okay, and uh, the next question is any approximate count, how many Indian people are waiting for employment-based GC? Uh, we have some stats with regards to the number of labor certifications and green cards that have been filed, though. Uh, it looks like right now, at least until January of 2015, we have about maybe 
200,000 people who are still waiting for the adjustment of status right now, based on the stats that would, I mean, this is just my estimate though. Mm -hmm. We did file a freedom of information with USCIS to figure it out how many Indians are getting waited though, because the, the current data which USCIS is releasing doesn't tell how many Indians are waiting though. They used to do that before 2018 though. Uh, the Trump administration stopped giving that data that, but we did file a freedom of information, most probably by end of this year, we should be getting it and we can publish it once we get it. Okay. And uh, the next question is, would there be a possibility for EB3 hitting year 2016 soon or in near future? My priority date is 2016 September EB2, but this is uh, to downgrade. If, if some of the provisions of the immigration bill that showed up in the, uh, in, the, in the House goes to the Senate, though, and that bill passes, though, we should be, uh, he should be fine. He should be fine. He should be getting the priority at current. But if the bill, the immigration provisions does not show up, though, it may take decades for him to get the priority at current. And That's the reason why I suggest everybody in this one and every friend of you need to write the letter to the congressman. And yeah, there are some people who said, yeah, I've been writing letters. I did not get the result. It won't come that easy. I mean, we have to keep fighting. Uh, you know, when you're born, you have to cry to have your mother's milk. And that's how the survival is. And if we people are sitting comfortably and uh, uh, then the Congress people don't know. We have to keep crying, crying, crying. You know, the animal kingdom, what it says is that it's the baby that always cries and asks for more food has a better chance of survival. The chick that doesn't ask for the food and just retains will get the leftovers and eventually that will die. And uh, that's how the nature is. And we have to keep asking these things. So please keep writing these letters. And for, for the people who want to do the date current, I mean, that's the only provision we have. What can we do? We're in democracy. That's the only thing that we can do is petition to the Congress, write to the Congressman. Okay. And the next question we have is- um, so I, Actually, it's um, almost 8.15. So I don't know how long we are going to- Yeah. this. Um, yeah, it's 9.15 EST. Uh, Rahul Garu, uh, uh, are you guys okay to go like- I'm fine for the next 15 more 20 minutes. minutes, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. 15, 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm sorry about that. All the, I have, we have a lot of questions, but uh, sure. we have to respect their time also. Uh, we are very thankful for them to come here and answer the questions. But um, uh, whatever we have uh, on the time, uh, we, will, we will go with those questions for the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, thank you very much. And the next question is, um, my PD is February 2017. Do you suggest changing the job now or wait for a few months? There's a difference of opinion between Rebecca and me. Rebecca says in 2019, she said, maybe I will move. But I, I personally, and you can curse me and you can give me bad remarks later on, but this is what I am. I will not move. Okay. I will not move. Okay, I'll go to the next question. Uh, my wife has recently got the H-1B and planning to travel US. So I would like to know what possibilities are currently available for H-4 to work in US. Um, if your spouse has an I-140 approval, then you are eligible to apply for an EAD once you are here in H-4 status. Um, other than that, um, that's the only path for an EAD for an H-4 visa holder at this time. Okay. And it's okay for, for a period of time. You can be a house husband or a house wife. Nothing wrong with it. I was there on H-4 and I was a house husband for a while. There's nothing wrong with it. And yeah, you can get an EAD within one and a half year after two years uh, if, your comp if your spouse's company can file a labor and I-140. Okay. And... Srikant, uh, I think you raised your hand uh, from long time. Could you please go ahead and present your question? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Tana. And uh, thank you, Reddy Garu and Rebecca, ma'am, for arranging this, for attending this call. Uh, so my priority date is 2014 May. So I missed the boat last time. So uh, with the new employer, my palm is 
under process and next one two months it will be approved so what do you suggest and now go with eb2 or eb3 my previous priority date was in was in uh, eb2 you know i i remember dm sanders from um, uh, atlanta and uh, th this guy used to play uh, both football and baseball so they used to ask would you like to play baseball and 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 football he says both uh often in the, in the football are you offense and defense both then they ask him the next question 7 million or 9 millions he said both so obviously if you are eligible for it go for both okay yeah go for thank both thank you yeah thank you thank you, you and the have next both the options available for you darshan yeah. oh, would you please present your question darshan hey hi uh, can you hear me yep yes yeah thank you uh, uh, rahul garu and thanks rebecca uh, so like uh, I, i for me uh, i140 process is not started yet so it will be start in one month or so so what would you suggest i am eligible for eb2 and eb3 both so shall i start with eb2 uh, or shall i start with eb3 now 7 million or 9 million what did i said take both no but like this is new petition right so yeah Oh yeah, so I would like you to file the labor certification under EB two, okay? okay? Because EB two labor certification, you can go for EB two or EB three. If you file the labor certification in EB three, you only have option for EB three. Okay, okay. So like, if I go with EB two now, later I can easily uh, uh, change to EB three. Like absolutely, you can. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rahul. Okay. The next is uh, Nagaraj. Nagaraju, please unmute yourself. Yeah, please go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Tana and uh, Rahul and uh, Rebecca. Um, actually, like uh, I have a question regarding uh, my priority date. My priority date is twenty uh, thirteen uh, March. Uh, I downgraded from EB two to EB three uh, last year, and uh, recently I got my one forty is approved in the premium, and I have done my fingerprints. Everything is done. I'm still waiting for. Uh, um ead cards uh, and uh, green card like uh, even i didn't get any rfe for the medicals also but uh, what i did is like last week i have submitted my medicals uh, like i did the inter file so uh, i i just want to know like what is my next step what i need to do to get my green card or ead cards nothing i guess there's nothing you can do right now you did all you did file the downgrade smart decision people told that you can't downgrade not us but some people you did downgrade it good job people said that you can't file the premium processing you did it people said you can't do interfiling a lot of people did interfiling and got the green cards too you did all you can right now but there is nothing else you can do right now you just have to wait oh okay yeah uh, and one more thing like uh... um like i heard that like there are retrogations are going to happen in the next month so if my date is going to going back then uh, at least will i get uh, ead cards absolutely you will ead cards even if it's retrogresses you will get ead but not green card okay got it yeah thank you okay thank you and the next question is yash um please unmute yourself yash Arif, okay. Hi, Rajgur. Thank you, Rajgur, and thank you, Redigar. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, I would like to ask, like you know, uh, my EAD is going to be renewal in February. I mean, pending for renewal. I mean, <clears throat> renewal is coming. Uh, if if I renew it, it's going to be two years, I guess. So, is it good to shift move to EAD or my H one will be expired in two thousand twenty three? So keep it H one H one B. I mean, which one is better option? Oh, million dollar question though. Here is here is where people will guide you this way and that way, and I'll tell you the percentages. So I want to give the percentages. If you move to the EAD, your risk of not getting the green card is about one percent. Okay. If you stay at the H one B though. your risk of not getting the green h1b and ead and you meet in the h1b your risk of not getting the green card is 5% <laughs> and, and 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 not 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 lot of lawyer will explain you like this though because they will only explain one thing 
that one percent risk that one particular guy who did not get the green card though okay yeah and they will tell about it and will make money on h1b's i as an immigrant i will let a will let h1b go i was on h i was on adjustment of status cad when i was immigration lawyer why should i advise somebody else differently tell me that i was an immigration yeah. lawyer going to interviews on h4 uh, sorry adjustment of status cad we let h1 and h4 go okay okay I, now I, I, yeah. so that's you have to take it from there though now people yeah. say why, why would the h1 why would the h1b has more risk than ead okay i will tell you why how many times have you heard people getting adjustment of status denied after their i140 is approved not many times not many times and didn't i said before and didn't I, rebecca said that we have seen so many h1b denials in 2017 and 2018 a significant amount of them we got denials of course you know a lot of problems occurred people left the country and come back so when the h1b gets denied saying that we don't agree it's a specialty occupation we don't agree that uh, that uh, that you have a proper position there it will be impacting the adjustment of status they will be looking into that very closely one officer says that you are not eligible how can i approve it so easily that's one thing second thing is fdns and let's say you are working from a different location than when you are working in ead yeah you can find there is no restriction on the uh, on the location though you can work for a different location that fdns visits you and you are working in la while your uh, lcss florida you are in trouble another problem every time you go outside the country you have to go for stamping if you want to maintain the h1b that's another problem these are all the problems you are going to accumulate by doing the h1b yeah there are two adjustment of status that we got denied one guy was working as a, a restaurant manager uh, from an it profession they denied it we have another guy who was doing food stamps claiming to be a us citizen his for it got denied <laughs> so you take the poison which one you want it Uh, but my concern is here just i heard that like you know from an h1b if if in case just eb3 is triggered before my date comes in for a good time and then eb2 is moving forward so i have to be on h1b to apply for 485 as that i understood right or it's wrong yeah rebecca said it rightly that but if you want if your i140 is already approved with eb3 though yes there is another way of doing moving to eb2 you can interfile it instead of filing a fresh 485 application if your i140 is not approved though then if you want to use eb2 you have to file the 485 application and you have to maintain the h1b but if your i140 is already approved under eb3 you can interfile we do interfiling a lot of times so in that case i have to be with my employer or i can move yes to you have to be with employer you are right you are absolutely right you have to be with employer okay okay and i'm i'm and, and last question sir i'm going to interval tomorrow i mean just monday mostly i'm going to send it so right. what are the chances i mean i have everything only medicals are missing so 30th is the hail mary go cut the coconut and try how it goes okay. that's all i got yeah. thank you redigar yeah thank you thank you very much thank you and the next question i have from the chat room it's been more than 13 years since i am in the us currently my priority date is current i had a couple of 140s with my previous employer the current employer abc some some abc i guess uh, has applied for form last month i am not sure how long it takes to get approved seems like it might take 6 to 8 months not sure can previous employer request them can previous employer i like just not updates yeah um apply for 485 um j is this valid without in their payroll no h1b valid with previous employer no valid h1b with previous employer can you suggest me good question rebecca yeah so the prior employer if they did not withdraw the i140 it's still valid and if they are willing to extend the job offer to you um they can sign the i485j supplement and you can file the i485 um you don't need to be currently working for that company at the time you file the i485 um it's the i140 and the i485j are based on a 
permanent future job offer. So the job offer from that prior company does need to be genuine. They need to be offering you that position, but you don't need to actually be working there at the time you file the I-485. What if the previous company has withdrawn the I-140? Can he still file the 485, Rebecca? Yes, they can refile the I-140. So you would file the I-140 and I-485 concurrently. They, the advantage of that is as long as that first I-140 was properly filed, even if it was withdrawn, um, that prior company doesn't need to go through the whole perm process again like your current employer does. They can file a new I-140 based on that prior approved perm and file it together with your I-485 application. So in that case, they wouldn't submit the J supplement. They're filing an, another I-140. Okay. And the next question we have is our priority date is October 2018 from old employer under EB2. We have the I-140, new employer will start the GC processing in four to five months. My question is, should we ask the new employer to file in EB-2 or EB-3, which is beneficial? Obviously, EB-2 would be better, Rajagaru, because EB-2 will have option of picking EB-3 and EB-2. But if it's only EB-3, though, they are locked with EB-3. Mm -hmm. That's a difference. They can't move to EB2 because remember, uh, Rajagaru, I said it's going to be Los Angeles line, EB2, yeah. EB3, EB2, EB3. So when you are like, whichever line is faster, you can join it. It's better to be an EB2 because you have options of moving here and there. If you are EB3, you can't change the lane. Even if the lane is open and it's been there one mile open, you can't move to that lane. Yeah. Okay, the next question is, um, I have a form from old employer and priority date is Jan 2019. And now I am with new employer and hasn't initiated the GC process yet. What should I do if this bill get passed? Will I be eligible or do I need to go back to my old employer? Under all the provisions that we look into it, unless uh, that essential worker thing, which doesn't look like they even proposed it right now, he has to go back to the old employer. Rebecca, do you disagree? Yeah, I would say that's correct. Okay. And I don't know, like this question. Uh, is H1 worker eligible to get GC under undocumented category if approved? Um, let's look into the registry process, Rajagar. It's a very good question. Very good question, though, because this is uh, this is where the whole immigration thing is revolving around. Um, does the person need to be undocumented in the registry process to get the green card, Rebecca? It seems like they do not need to be. So it allows for people to apply if they are undocumented, but it seems like if you meet all the other requirements, which is usually continuous presence in the U.S. from a certain cutoff date, then you're eligible to file for it, even if you're documented. Uh, Raja Garu, there may be some creative ways, and there are there are times that um, I have worked in, uh, you know, for starting 1993, I, 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 I worked, uh, sorry, 1995, I worked as a lawyer, though. We have to prove, uh, the immigration was arguing that our client was legal and we have to prove that our client was not legal. There are some creative ways though. Um, in the, we can always argue that on the H-1B application, he is about Java 6.0, but he worked on 6.2. Uh, uh, this is just unofficial guys. We can, there are ways to creatively prove that my client is illegal. There are things that we can do it. But at this point of time, the registry that we have right now, even if you're legal, we are allowed to file the 4 application. That's our reading. If there is any changes that they will do, we don't know. Because they're trying to just extend it from 1972 to whatever date they want it. Okay. And I think we are, uh, we ran out of time. It's almost like 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, thank you all for coming. One last question, uh, Rahul Redigaru. Um, is your background, is a virtual background or is it a real, real house? I, I wish I have that kind of thing. <laughs> um, if I would be advising all the clients to maintain the H-1B, I would have that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and yeah. I don't advise, once you're EAD, I tell people, no, you don't. And, and, and the other thing that I suggest is that don't try to trouble yourself in, 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 in you know, like creating more troubles for you to make these kind of houses to the immigration lawyers, guys. Try to simplify, try to restrict your travel, try to make it very simple and try, uh, try not to get into trouble. Okay, thank, thank you, Raghavir. And I, we have a lot of questions here. Uh, I, I still see like around 50 questions on the chat box and I have like 10 people uh, hands raised. I'm so, really sorry about that. Um, we will come back again uh, some other um, month or maybe some sometime next month or so. Um, uh, we have to appreciate our um, um, uh, immigration lawyers here, Rahul Reddy, as well as Rebecca Chen uh, for coming here and giving us almost like one and a half hour time, uh, their valuable time to provide um, some valuable suggestions and answer the questions to our community people. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Murli Garu, are you there? You want to say a few words or? Okay, I think Murli has unmute. Uh, once again, thank you everyone uh, for joining. Uh, we will come back with more sessions um, uh, in uh, later. Hopefully this bill will go and uh, give our community a better chance to get GCTs, green cards. And uh, thank you very much everyone and uh, um, good night all. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.